I'm a big fan of the software getting out of the way so I can just focus on making music, but sometimes it helps to focus on the software because there might be settings and preferences that you don't know about that would make your life a lot better when you sat down to make music. That's what this video is all about. I'm going to share with you my five favorite preferences settings in Studio One. I know, I know you're thinking preferences, but just stick with it. There may be at least one of these you've not heard of, and it might be a game changer for you. So in Studio One, I'm going to click on Studio One and click on Preferences. The, if you're on a PC, this menu shows up over here somewhere. I've got mine set up to when I press Command, comma, it opens up Preferences for me uh, because I go into Preferences quite a bit to check on things, change things, depending on what scenario I'm in. Uh, as you'll see here, there's five main tabs, and then each of these tabs has a number of tabs underneath it. There, there's a lot. There's a lot here. Rather than going through each thing step by step, I'm just going to show you the five that I think will be the biggest bang for the buck for you. The first, you need to go to Locations right here and go to the User Data tab. Data, Data, leave a comment. Which one is it? I think it's Data. Um, and look here for Enable Auto Save. This should be on by default. I think it is, but just double check. Um, this is a literal, hmm, not a lifesaver because it has never saved my life literally, but this is a song saver because you can set this up to auto save every certain amount of time. I've got mine set to five minutes. So worst case scenario, I'm working on a project and I lose my, my power goes out, everything shuts down. The absolute worst case scenario is I lose the take that I was recording and anything I've done in the last five minutes. So while losing that five minutes might be sad, for the most part, I've never lost anything due to something unforeseen like a power outage and things like that uh, because it happens, especially here in Tennessee for some reason. So enable autosave. It just automatically saves a backup. I don't have to. Granted, I've developed the habit of hitting Command S or Control S to save all the time, which I do, but this also does that for me. So if I'm busy and I'm recording a bunch of guitars and then suddenly... I've recorded, you know, for an hour and I haven't actually hit the save button and everything crashes like my, my power goes out. Uh, when I load it back up, it's going to say, hey, I, it's going to actually tell me, hey, there's an autosave version of this. That's the most recent one. Do you want to load that? And I say yes. And I'm happy because I haven't lost anything. The second of my favorite settings is actually here in the locations window as well. It's this one. By the way, the autosave, there's a minimum you can do. I think five minutes is great because it does trigger kind of a background process of autosaving. This will do it 20 times a minute, uh, 20 times a minute, 20 times an hour. That feels, is it 20? 12 times an hour. Math is hard. Wait. Five, yeah, 12 times an hour. That feels appropriate every five minutes. Anything faster um, doesn't seem necessary for me. So five minutes has worked out well for me. I never notice that it's running in the background. Uh, on really big sessions, occasionally you'll notice it'll go, <gasps> it'll kind of do a little hiccup while it's saving, but it doesn't actually mess with the audio or mess with recording. It's just, I can see that, oh, it's auto-saving. So five minutes works well for me. Second setting is ask to copy external files when saving a document. This one Again, I don't know if it's saved, checked by default, but I think it should be because here's the scenario. I've got, let's say, I downloaded some tracks someone sent to me uh, into my downloads folder. And I come in and I drag them all. Let's create a spot down here. Let's say I drag some of these files into my song and I start working on them and I start mixing. Um, let's say later someone else comes along and says, man, my hard drive's full. I'm going to clear out, delete everything in the downloads folder because that's temporary stuff anyway, right? As soon as that gets deleted, I no longer have access to those files because this is referencing that downloads folder currently unless I have this selected. That means once I drag them in and the next time I hit save, command S, it pops up with this window that says, yo, do you want to copy these external files into the media folder, meaning into the folder for this song? So when you create a new song, it creates a folder with that song name. It has the song file, and it has a media folder where all the audio goes. It's asking, do you want to copy it out of this downloads folder and into your media folder? The answer should almost always be yes. It'll still be in the downloads folder, so I could use it elsewhere if I want. But if that downloads folder gets deleted or I open this up on another computer that doesn't have the same downloads, I'm good to go because it all got copied into the folder for this song. So the answer is yes. All right. I'm not going to say yes because I actually don't want to copy those over. 
into this song, but you get what I'm saying. You smell what I'm stepping in. Okay, the third, my third favorite setting or preference in Studio One is actually just an aesthetic thing. Um, I typically, if you watch my videos, I like just a nice dark background. I like to keep everything kind of, I use dark mode for everything on my computer, on my phone, but occasionally I want to shake things up. Maybe it's the middle of winter and I want some brightness in my life because the sun hasn't been out for a month. Um, I will come into, uh, I always forget where it is, it's in general appearance. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember that. Under general, go to the appearance tab. And the one thing I want you to mess with is this luminance function. So by default, Studio One looks like this. So it's a little more, a little lighter gray. The colors are a little pop a little bit more, a little more friendly. I like to go this way and make everything super dark and brooding like Batman. But um, if you go the other direction, check out what happens. Bam, it is like a completely new app. And if you change the luminance setting in the arranger as well, which I think would make sense if we're going for this brightness, um, this is a completely new app. Like my face is now lit up more than it normally is. So now I have this bright, beautiful app in front of me. It also applies to like the start, look, look at that, the start page, just everything super, super bright. Now, obviously, that's maybe a little over the top. We could pull it down to something a little more reasonable if we don't want it to just blind us, but we do have that option. And we can also adjust the saturation, and it's just, it's very cool. I like to keep it here, but occasionally you've seen some videos where I shake things up and I go nice and bright because, you know, sometimes brightness just makes me happy. All right, that is a fun setting to mess around with. And as you can see, there's other settings you can play with. And you can even store these as presets. So you find one that's just perfect. You can save that as a preset file um, and even share that with your friends if you want, which is kind of cool. All right, the f uh, next, number four. Preference number four, that is one of my favorites. I need to open up a song for this uh, because this one is a game changer. I'm going to show you how it works first, then I'll show you where the preference is. So let's say I'm about to record a vocal. And I've got this, this track enabled to record. And let's say this is bar 55 is where the uh, chorus begins. So this is where I'm, I'm singing. Let's say, actually, let's say it's not me singing. I'm recording somebody else. And I say, okay, I'm going to give you two bars before the chorus begins. And, and my goal is I'm going to punch them in here. So I hit play. They're hearing the song. And then they sing this really cool part right before barf 155 so it's going along and they do something like and then i press record and now they're singing and i realize oh man that thing they did just before i hit record was really cool oh, i wish i was recording i can't tell them that i didn't record that that's embarrassing guess what studio one was listening the whole time look what happens when i drag this file back check this out <laughs> we captured we captured that beautiful beautiful vocal line and the singer never has to know that we punch them in too late so this is a such a useful tool if you just happen to punch in too late like um on on you just you just press the button too late no problem studio one was listening i can count one two three four five six i pressed it on four but it sounds like four. Oh, I missed the first part of that. Uh, no problem. Four. Oh, we want to go back and get three, two? Yeah, that's no problem either. Four. Oh, three, four. Right? That is such a handy tool. Where do you find that? I'll show you where you find it. You go to audio, the audio setup tab. Uh, you go to, wait, processing. No, dadgummit. <laughs> I just said I was going to show you where it's at. You go to advanced audio. So advanced, which is where a lot of the fun settings are, audio tab. And then you check this box right here for pre-record audio input. I believe this max out at one minute. But with this selected, Studio One is basically whenever you have a microphone on, it is listening and is kind of constantly recording whatever is coming into that input uh, until you press record. So right now, I'm not even recording, right? I'm not recording. Now I'm recording. Check out what happens. That audio file. Look at that. I'm not recording. Wait, what? I'm not recording. I wasn't recording, but Studio One was still listening. Now, 
if that offends you that it's listening, then turn that setting off. But if you're like me and you're thinking, wait, what, what did you just say? What did you just play? What was that thing you just did? Um, all you got to do is hit record once. Like I say, someone says something really brilliant and you say, man, that was brilliant. Record. I can go back. I already captured that. Rewind. Check it out. It was brilliant. Brilliant. And you say, there it is. There's the brilliant thing I just said. Brilliant. And because Studio One is pre-recording any audio input that's there. Man, I get goose I get I, I get goosebumps thinking about that one. That is one of my favorites of all time. Final one. This is one that we rolled out a few versions ago. Um, that I don't know if I talked about in a video, but it's pretty stinking handy. And it's simply this. Come to Advanced, and instead of the Audio tab, come over to the Console tab, and you'll see this one right here. Enable Undo. What is that? For years, in Studio One, if I was working on a mix, and I did something like I selected these, and I pulled them down on accident, and I clicked away, and I thought, oh, no. I accidentally moved everything I didn't mean to. Or, you know, in some world I had like all of these selected and I accidentally pulled them down and clicked somewhere else. And now if I move one back up, uh, I, I literally lost all those volume settings, right? Because I moved it. I guess I could save and go back to an auto save or something like that. But I've literally, I've literally messed up the entire mix. That's no longer a problem because of this setting. Um, undo has always been available for things like, oh, I, I deleted something in the arranger, I press undo, it comes back. But now it's available in the mixer. Not a new feature, but a handy feature. So let's say I come in here and I do that thing I just said. I accidentally selected all the tracks and then I accidentally turned everything down. And then I come over here and start working on something and think, what is wrong with this? Oh, goodness gracious, I turned everything down. Uh, Command Z, Control Z on the PC, undo, it undid it. That is incredibly handy. Also applies to things like, oh, you accidentally deleted those plugins and you changed your mind. Undo. Easy peasy. Beautiful. So if you don't have that selected, by all means, have it selected because it undoes even things like fader moves. Never mind. Right? This was at the perfect volume and someone said, turn it down 7 dB. And you're like, all right, here you go. And then they say, never mind. You can say, no problem. It's back exactly where it was before because I have undo enabled. All right, those are my fun preferences that mean a lot to me. What are your favorite preferences in Studio One? Leave a comment below and let us know. My name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.